In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this push car for a young child. What's nice about it is it has this circle. The child's able to put his hand around it and push. I belong to a Word Workers Association and we make over a thousand toys a year that we donate to our fire department during the holidays and they distribute them to their fire stations who distribute them to the kids of need. And this is one of the toys that we make. We do have a member that has a shop, a really large shop, and he spends every day making toys. And I usually go to his shop and help him out. I believe last month I made like over 30 of these cars. So I thought I'd make one myself for my great grandson. And this is one I made. Our club usually makes these out of inch and a half stock wood. I didn't have any inch and a half, so I glued two pieces of three quarter together. Be a little different. So you don't have to use inch and a half. I would say inch and a half is the smallest you want to go. I wouldn't go anything smaller. And the largest you want to go, here's three pieces of three quarter together. So this is what, two and a quarter inches. So I don't think you want to go any larger than this. This is actually the one that we're gonna be demonstrating on the video. I will give you a link that you can download the pattern for these cars. It's a simple cut. Make sure you mark where the center hole for this hole is, and also where the, where the wheels go. First thing you wanna do is get yourself some wood, inch and a half, or glue some three quarters together, or you can actually Maybe put two, three quarters in it, put two or three different colors in the middle. Be, be creative. So go ahead and mark that up, glue it together, take the pattern I gave you, go ahead and uh, cut it out. And once you get it, get it cut out, we'll go ahead and continue with the holes. The hole in the center is drilled out with a two and one eighth inch bit. I use a Fostner bit. If you don't have a Fostner, maybe you can use a hole saw. Um, it's two and an eighth. If you don't have two and an eighth, two inch probably be okay. But I try to get a two, two and an eighth if you could. And just make sure that you have the, where the wheels go are marked somehow. And the next step is gonna take a, uh, quarter inch round over and round over everything, both sides, quarter inch round over. So here it is, all quarter inch round over, quarter inch round over, same thing on this side, quarter inch, quarter inch all around. Make sure that you have your wheels centered marked. I always use a point, so I actually have a little indentation at both places so I don't lose them. The next step is gonna to be to uh, sand all this down and finish it. I'm gonna finish mine with uh, polyurethane. The club, like I said, we do a lot of these at one time and we'll set up a spray booth and we'll spray it with lacquer. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, do polyurethane on mine. I know you're saying we haven't drilled out for the wheels yet but we're gonna do that after this is finished. We have to decide what size wheels we want, et cetera, and that'll determine what size holes we drill. So let's go ahead and sand all this down, put a nice finish on it, then we'll come back and we'll do the wheels. So the body's all finished. Turned out real nice, real happy with it. Oh, in case you're wondering, I do stamp it with my name and the date so people know who made it. I use stamps like uh, envelope stamps, return addresses and stuff. I buy them on Amazon and they're fairly cheap. I have the date on them. So every year I got to change the date. This one's 2024. When 2025 comes around, I'll get new ones that says 2025. The finish I used was a Minwax polyurethane warm satin. I like that. I really don't like a glossy finish on mine. Now it's time to pick out wheels. 
On this one, the diameter of this wheel is one and three quarter inches. I use them because the uh, club member I make, whose shop I make these at, had four extras and he gave them to me. So they're one and three quarter inches and he pre lacquers them before he glues them on. But on mine, which I think is gonna be more like to me like a hot rod, I'm gonna go with two inch wheels in the back and go with one and a half in the front. That's gonna give it a, a dipping, you know, lower sensation. Thing you have to be careful about is when you buy the wheels, they take different axle sizes. So when you drill your hole, you have to make sure you have the right size. The, of course, a two inch is gonna take the larger and one and a half is gonna take the smaller of the axles. When you drill your holes, the most important thing is to get to them the same distance centered to the bottom of the car on both sides. If you don't, it's not gonna sit flat, it's gonna wobble. So what I do is I made a jig that has a fence on it. This is for my drill press. I'll have my drill in, I'll take my car, I'll put it up against the fence, I'll move it to where the hole is, and I'll drill it, move it, drill it. I can flip it over, drill, flip it over, move it, drill it. That way the holes are uniform as far as being from the bottom. As far as this way, it doesn't matter, you can be off a little bit. The main thing is from the bottom so it doesn't go like this when you set it down. On the inch and a half cars, we drill the holes all the way through. Just one, one pass so you really don't need the fence. But on this one, I'm gonna do just three quarters of an inch on each hole. So that way I do have to flip it, and make sure they're all lined up correctly. So here it is with the holes drilled out. You can see the front is a little bit smaller than the back one because of the axle size. What I do with the axles is I'll sand a flat spot. Hopefully you can see it, a flat spot in it. That way when I glue it and I push it in, I'm not compressing it, you know, forcing glue in. It gives it some way for the air and the glue to escape. How we glue these is you only put a little bit of glue. You don't need much. A lot of people put a lot of glue and that presents a lot of problems. So you take your wheel, ooh, put your axle in, a little bit of glue. Then we take a credit card, make a slot in it, and set it on there, then push this in and that will give you your, how far you leave it open. Then you can pull this out and your wheel will be out from the car and it'll still be able to spin. So that's how we glue them in. So the next step is to go ahead and finish, finish your wheels, either lacquer them, varnish them, paint them, whatever you're gonna do and then glue them in and you're done. I myself, uh, I'm thinking about maybe painting them black. So we'll see what I do. So here it is all finished. As you can see, I painted the wheels black, painted the axles red, smaller wheel on the front, larger in the back because it lets it dump a little bit, you know, like a lowered front end. So all I think turned out really nice. And like I said, I put my name in the bottom so my great-grandson who's gonna get this will know who made it and maybe it'll get passed on. What I didn't tell you where to buy the wheels, Amazon has them. But in my case, I went to Hobby Lobby, which is just down the street from me. And I was able to physically see them and pick the ones out I wanted. <clears throat> I'm sure Hobby Lobby has a website also. So all in all, I'm very happy with it. Thank you very much for watching.